continuing our practical course on automation, Python coding, and traffic, by the end of which you will learn to automate like a pro, to build powerful bots like a constructor and develop an automated system for harvesting free traffic. Today we have the midpoint of the course and a very interesting lesson where you will learn a lot, including what you see on this slide. The topic of today's lesson is preparing videos for our work. So what approaches exist for this task? Firstly, you can create videos yourself. There are tons of tutorials on YouTube about producing shorts and reels. The second approach is downloading videos from free stock websites like Pexels. This process can be automated through an API to quickly download a large number of files. And finally, the third approach is downloading videos from TikTok or Instagram. In today's lesson, we'll explore the third option because it allows us to delve into many automation processes. So today, we'll be writing a Python bot that will scrape video links from TikTok based on a keyword, save them to a file, and then download HD quality videos using these links. So let's get started with developing the bot. What does developing the core of a bot mean? Let's create a plan and follow it. So we need to define the main classes of the bot, determine the main methods, develop the folder structure, handle instances, outline the launch logic, create paths, and program the automatic creation of folders. Let's start the development. Create a project and name it TikTok bot. First, let's install the necessary dependencies. We'll need the request library and undetected Chrome driver for our work. Install it through the terminal using the following command. Then, create the file name main.py, which will serve as the entry point for the application. Next, create a package name modules where we will place our classes. What classes will we have? To understand, define the main objects in the system, then determine who or what will interact with these objects. In our video link parsing and downloading bot, the objects could be the video link and the video file. The actors interacting with these objects would be the parser and downloader. These actors are our classes. Let's create files for these classes. We will extract common elements for these classes into a base class. For the base class, let's create a file name base. Now let's declare the classes. First, let's declare the base class TikTok in the base file, leaving it empty for now. Now, in the parser file, let's declare the parser class and inherit it from the base class TikTok. In the downloader file, let's declare the downloader class and also inherit it from the parent class. Thus, the structure of our classes will look like this. Two child classes, parser and downloader, and the parent class TikTok. Now, let's create the main public methods for our classes. To do this, let's think about what our bot should do. The parser should parse links based on a keyword and the downloader should download videos from these links. Let's create the corresponding methods. In the parser class, we'll create the parse by keyword method and leave it empty for now. In the downloader class, we'll create the download method and also leave it empty. Now let's create the project folder structure. Create a folder named results. Inside this folder, there will be subfolders, each containing a file with links to videos, as well as downloaded videos for each keyword. So the folder structure for our bot will look like this. A bit later, we'll program the automatic creation of these folders. For now, let's move on to the main PI file and implement the logic for launching and handling instances of our classes. Let's create two functions, parsing and downloading. Inside the parsing function, we'll declare a for loop. And this loop for each keyword from the list that we pass to the function as an argument, will create an instance of the parser class. Then we'll call the parse by keyword method on this object. Import the parser class and move the import statement inside the function. Next, let's create the entry point using the if name construction. Inside it, we'll declare a list with keywords that we'll pass. Then we'll call the parsing function and pass the list of keywords as an argument. Now let's move on to the downloading function. Here we will also pass a list of keywords. The keyword will be the name of the folder from which we will take the file with links to download. Let's create a for loop. Now we need to read the file with links in each folder and get a list with them. For this, we need to create another method. Let's go to the download class and create the read links file method. It will return a list, but for now, let's leave it empty. Go back to the main PI file. We need to create an instance of the downloader class, then call the read links file method on this object and save the result in the variable links. 
import the downloader class and move the import into the function. Then create a for loop and for each link from the list, call the download method. Go back to the entry points and call the downloading function, passing the list of keywords as an argument. Comment out this line for now because we will run these functions one by one. At the end of the parser development, we will add the ability to choose the bot's operating mode, parser or downloader. To complete the basis of our bot, we need to create paths and program automatic folder creation. The working folder is a common element for both classes, so we move this element to the base class. First, let's create the constructor of the class. Now let's form the path to the working folder using the join method of the OS module. We can see that the constructor of the class should take a keyword argument, which will be the name of the folder. Let's add this argument. Now let's create a static method that will check the existence of the folder. Create it if it doesn't exist and return the path to it. Next, we will create an instance attribute save path and assign it the result of the static method by passing the variable save path as an argument. Now, the folders in our boat will be created automatically. Now, let's move to the parser class and create the constructor of the class. Accept an argument with the folder name, then call the constructor of the base class using the super function and pass this argument. Do the same in the downloader class. Then go back to the main POI file and pass the argument with the folder name to the constructor when creating the object. The primary skeleton is ready. Now let's proceed to refine the classes. As both parsing and downloading require Selenium, another common element for both classes is the browser driver. Therefore, we are moving this element to the parent class. Let's add a static method to create a driver object. This method will take proxy and browser mode as arguments. Don't forget to import undetected Chrome driver. In the class constructor, create an attribute called driver and assign it the result of the method. Accept proxy and browser mode as arguments in the class constructor and set their default values. Also in this class, we place two methods for waiting for elements to appear on the page for a specified time and one for waiting for an element to disappear. Since these methods might be useful in both classes, we move them to the base class to avoid duplicating code. Then let's add the necessary imports. Now let's proceed to implement the parser. To start, let's go to the TikTok website and understand how we will search for videos. We can construct a URL with the keyword and directly open it using Selenium, but in that case, TikTok will present a CAPTCHA. To avoid the CAPTCHA, we need to mimic user behavior and input the keyword into the search field, then press Enter or the Search button. For this purpose, let's create a private method called Input Keyword. It will take the keyword as an argument. Now let's define a selector to locate the input form and implement the search for the element. Then, we'll input the keyword and press enter. Let's go back to the website. On the search results page, we see the top and video tabs. These tabs may have a different number of search results, so let's add the ability for the bot to switch between these tabs. To achieve this, let's create a private method called switch to video. We'll find the element through the inspector and decide how to locate it. We'll locate this element by ID and click on it. Let's start implementing our main parsing method. It will take the keyword and the tab from which we will parse links as arguments. We'll set the default tab to top. Now move up and create a class attribute, assigning it the website address. Then in the parsing method, we'll open this page. After loading the page, we'll call the method to input the keyword and pass the variable with the keyword to it. Now let's define the selectors of the elements we need to find. On the top tab, the video links are inside a div block with the attribute data e2e equal to search top item. 
On the Videos tab, they are inside a div block with the attribute equal to search video item. This time, we'll use XPath to locate elements on the page. XPath is a powerful tool for navigating through XML or HTML documents. For finding the necessary links on the top tab, the XPath expression will be like this. This expression means that we are looking for an element with a link inside a div element, with the attribute data A2E set to search top item. Let's go back to our parsing method and create variables, with XPath expressions for finding links on both tabs. Next, create a check. If the mode value is top, we'll parse links from the top tab. Otherwise, parse links from the videos tab. For parsing, create a separate private method where we'll pass selector values and the timeout between scrolls. Let's call this method in our check and pass our selectors to it. The method will return a list of links, so save the result in the variable video links. Now, let's implement the parsing logic. Videos on the website are loaded dynamically as the page is scrolled, so we need to scroll the page until no more new videos are loaded. So to start, let's find the initial set of video links using the provided XPath selector and save the number of links in the variable preview video count. Since we don't know how many times we need to scroll the page, we need to declare a while loop. Inside the loop, we simulate scrolling to the end of the web page by sending the end key press to the page's body. After each scroll action, we wait for the specified timeout duration. Then we retrieve the current set of video links and compare the current count of video links with the previous count. If the counts are the same, it indicates that no new videos were loaded and the loop breaks. Once the loop concludes, we extract the URLs from the collected video links. Finally, we return a list containing the collected video URLs. All right, now we need to write the obtained links to a file. To do this, let's create a separate private method. It will take a list of links and a keyword as arguments. First, let's form the file path using the join method. Note that we retrieve the save path attribute from the parent class. Next, let's implement the logic to write the links to the file. Now, let's go back to our main method and call the method to write links to the file. Pass the list of links and the keyword as arguments. Now we can test the parser. Let's run the bot. Upon opening the page, a window pops up prompting us to log in to TikTok, which will interfere with the bot's operation. To avoid this, let's add the ability to log in to the account. We will take the login method from the bot we wrote in the previous lesson. Its logic will be as follows. We check for the presence of a cookies file which contains session data. If the file is found, we load the cookies from the file, add them to the current session, and log in automatically. If not found, we log in by entering the login and password, then save cookies for subsequent login. The first part of the method remains unchanged. Now we need to add a method to check for the presence of a cookies file. We also need to generate the path to the cookies folder and create an instance attribute that will contain this path. Let's do this in the base class. In the constructor of the parser class, we need to accept the login and password for login and create corresponding object attributes. Also, let's create an attribute that will contain the full path to the cookies file. Now let's modify the second part of the method. First, let's create a class attribute login URL and assign it the login page address. The address will be like this. Now let's define the selectors for the input fields. We will search by the value of the type attribute. Let's update the selectors in the code. Now let's define the button selector and update it in the code.
The method is ready. Now let's go to the main PI file and add the login and password to the constructor when creating an object. Also, let's not forget to call the login method for our parser object. Now let's run the bot. Upon logging into the account, we encounter a CAPTCHA, so let's set a delay and manually solve the CAPTCHA to log into the account and save cookies. In the future, logins to the account will be automatic, and we won't need to solve the CAPTCHA every time. Let's try logging into the account again to save cookies. A CAPTCHA appeared, let's solve it. I've set a 30 second delay. If you can't solve the CAPTCHA in time, increase the delay. All right, the login is complete. Let's check if the cookies have been saved. Now let's check if the automatic login is working. Note that while I'm testing the login, I've commented out the parsing method call. Let's run the bot again. Great automatic login is working. Before we proceed further with the parser, let's add the ability for the bot to work in headless mode and through a proxy. Let's break down these terms. Headless mode is a browser operating mode in which the browser window is not displayed on the user's screen. A proxy is used to substitute the IP address and change the geographical location of your request. In the case of TikTok, you might need this to get video links from a specific location. For this purpose, you can also use a VPN. In one of the videos on my channel, I've already covered how to create your own fast and reliable VPN server. Let's get back to the code. To add this functionality to the bot, we need to accept the corresponding arguments in the parser class constructor and then pass them to the base class constructor. Then set the necessary values and pass the variables as arguments when creating the parser object. For now, let's disable proxy support. To do this, set the value to none. If you decide to work through a proxy later, create a variable and specify the proxy in the required format. Then assign the value of this variable to the proxy variable when creating the object. To enable the headless mode of the browser, assign the value true to the headless variable. During the parser testing, I noticed the following. After login, the page becomes heavy, and its loading takes quite a while. Therefore, it is necessary to set a delay after entering the keyword into the search form to allow the content to load. Let's set the delay to one minute. It is also necessary to increase the timeout between page scrolls. Let's set it to 15 seconds. You can adjust the timeout values based on your needs and internet connection speed. After logging in and passing the TikTok CAPTCHA, the platform stopped displaying the login window even within sessions with a logged out account. Therefore, you can continue working without performing logins, significantly speeding up the process. To disable login, comment out the login method call. Working without login is much faster, but TikTok returns fewer results. All right, now we are ready for the final parsing. But before that, let's take another look at the loop where we create the parser object. Does anything seem strange to you here? We know that the browser driver object is created when the parser object is created. If we leave everything as it is, a separate browser driver object will be created for each keyword in the list each time. However, we don't want this. We would like to search for multiple keywords sequentially within one session. To achieve this, we need to create the parser object before the loop. Let's do that. But now we cannot pass the keyword as the first argument there. So let's pass the folder name where all the files with links will be saved. This approach is more appropriate, so our parser is ready. And now we are ready for the final parsing. We'll perform the final parsing without logging into the account and in headless mode. To download videos from TikTok, we will use the Synaptic service. Let's move on to the downloader class and create a class attribute, assigning it the website address. Now let's start implementing the download method. 
First, we need to open the page. Now let's go to the website and see what we need to do to get the download links. We need to enter the link in the field and click the button. Let's write a private method for this. Our bot will be able to download videos in regular quality and HD quality. Let's create private methods for this. Let's implement the first method. Let's see how we can extract the link address from the HTML code. We need to find an element with a link using ACSS selector and extract the value of the href attribute from it. Then, return this value from the method. Now let's implement the second method. Getting the link to the video in HD quality is not that simple. This link is dynamically generated using a unique access token. To understand this, let's first switch to the Network tab, then select Fetch. Now click the Download button and analyze which requests are being sent and received during the web page loading process. Here we see a request to the server to get the link to the HD video. This request includes a token parameter containing the access token in the JSON web token format. The server uses the provided token for authentication and authorization of the request to determine if the client has access to the requested content. In response to the request, the server sends a JSON response, and one of the fields contains a string representing the link to the content. So to get the link to the HD video, we need to obtain the access token. To do this, we need to find the element with the button using a CSS selector and extract the value of the data token HD attribute from it. Then, we need to form a request to the server, substituting the token into it. After that, we need to send this request to the server and parse the JSON response and extract the value of the URL field. Let's implement this. To start, let's find the button using a CSS selector and obtain the value of the data token HD attribute. Next, let's form the link for the request and substitute the token value using an F string. Next, we'll create a separate static method for sending the request and handling the JSON response. In this method, we send a get request to the provided link, and the server's response is stored in the response variable. Next, we check if the request was successful by comparing the response status code with the code for a successful request. In the try block, we attempt to decode JSON data from the response using the JSON method from the requests library, and we save them in the JSON data variable. Then, we extract the value from the URL field in the decoded JSON data and return the extracted link. Then in the getHDLink method, we call this method passing the form request link as an argument, and we save the result in the final video link variable. Finally, we return the ready link to the video from the method. Let's go back to the download method. It will take an argument with the link and the download mode. For the download mode, let's set a default value. After loading the page, let's call the method to input the link into the search field and pass the link as an argument there. Then add a check. If the download mode is equal to HD, call the getHDLink method and save the result in the video link variable. Otherwise, call the getNormalLink method. All right, the link is obtained. Now let's write a method that will download the video using this link. It will take the link and the path to the saved file as arguments. In this method, we use the requests library to send a get request with streaming enabled, allowing the video to be downloaded in chunks. The response is then iterated over in chunks and each chunk is written to the file. Now in the download method, we need to create the path to the saved file. First, let's form the file name. We'll take the last element of the video link after the slash as the file name, to do this, extract the last element using the split function and take the last element. Then, append the extension to the file name. Now let's create the full path using the join method. Now check that video link is not none and call the method to download the video, passing the necessary arguments. All right, we're almost done. All that's left is to write a method for opening links from a file. First, in the class constructor, create the link's file path attribute and form the file path. Note that we retrieve the save path attribute from the parent class, then concatenate it with the file name using the join method. Now, let's implement the logic for the file reading method. First, handle the scenario where the file is not found. 
Then open the file, read it, and return its contents as a list, also handling the scenario of an empty file. Okay, the code is written. However, before running the bot, let's make a couple of adjustments. In the get normal link and get HD link methods, let's replace the standard element search with a timed search for added reliability. Now let's go to the main POI file and pass the link to the method for downloading the file. Now let's move to the entry point. To run the downloader, uncomment the call to this function and comment out the parser call. But I promise you that in the end, we would create handling to choose the bot's mode of operation. Let's do that. Now when running the bot, we can choose the bot's mode of operation. To start the parser, enter the number one. To start the downloader, enter the number two. Before running the bot, let's pass and accept arguments in the class constructor for the proxy and browser mode, and enable headless mode. Now let's run the bot. After launching the bot, we can see that the bot cannot find the file with links. This happened because during the parser development, we moved the parser object outside the loop, and parsing results started to be saved in the links folder. However, the bot still searches for them in the folder with the keyword name. Thus, the folder with the keyword name has ceased to be a common element for both classes. Now, each class has its own folder for saving results. Therefore, we need to consider this in the constructors of our classes and make some adjustments. In the base class, let's change the attribute save path to results path and assign it the path to the results folder. Let's create another attribute that will contain the path to the folder with link files. We create this attribute in the base class because we need access to it from both the parser and downloader classes. The parser class will no longer accept the key argument. It is no longer a common element for both classes, so the base class also stops accepting it. We only need this argument in the downloader class. Therefore, we'll create the attribute that contains the path to the folder for saving videos, and for which we need the key argument in the downloader class. In the main PI file, when creating the parser object, let's remove the first argument. Now everything will work as expected. One more thing, let's add enumerates to the loop for iterating over links, and we'll display information about which link we are working with. We'll start the numbering from one. Great, now we can test our downloader. so everything works fine. How else can we improve our bot's code? I think creating folders in the class constructors might seem a bit convoluted. Let's do it a little differently. We won't create variables and we'll directly assign path values to attributes. And then we'll make sure that the folders are created. Using the makeDeers method from the OS module, setting the exist parameter to true. This will be a more elegant solution. Let's make a similar change in the constructor of the downloader class. Towards the end of working on the bot, I finally realized that I don't like this links folder where all the files with links will be stored. Initially, I envisioned that each file with collected links would be saved in a folder corresponding to the keyword. Let's go ahead and do just that. To achieve this, we'll move the path formation for saving parsing results from the constructor of the base class to the parsing method. For this, we'll remove the link save path attribute from the base class. Then we'll form the path for saving parsing results in the parse method. Here we take the keyword and can create the path considering this keyword.
Next, we'll construct the path to the final file and pass this variable to the method for writing links to the file. Now, let's move on to this method and remove the path that was formed before. Also, let's move the cookies path attribute from the base class to the parse class. Also, let's add default values for proxy and headless arguments. In the downloader class, let's fix the path to the file with links. That's it! With this, the development of our TikTok bot is complete. First of all, I'll mention that the entire code for today's lesson is available in my Telegram channel in the pinned message. Now here's your homework for today. You need to prepare 100 videos for each niche chosen in the first lesson. That's all for today. Congratulations, you've passed the halfway point of the course. In the next session, we'll lay the foundation for our Pinterest monster and teach it to generate titles and descriptions for our pins using ChatGPT. See you in the next video.